and welcome back to OC Avery. I've got a short and bonus video for you today and this is on uh, the first step in my challenge to breed the Greenfinch cross crossbill, so the Greenfinch crossbill hybrid. Now as you saw in about October we paired the uh, you know we paired the two birds together we have a normal visual green finch who is split for agate and is split for pine and then we have a normal crossbill hen and um, we paired those in october we pair them in a, a small wooden breeding cage which didn't turn out to be a very good idea considering we had a crossbill in the mix and the, the cage was um, quite heavily chewed as you can see here now and uh, she is sat on a perch that has been very heavily chewed and um, has chewed to, to quite a few pieces. Now, um, today I just really took the first or the next step in uh, achieving that um, it, it, that hybrid, and that was actually moving the pair from a flight. Uh, we moved them from the double breeding cage they were in to a, uh, a smaller flight, which is actually where they will be breeding uh, come the time when I do plan on breeding them and then we've moved them now in here for the next um, six or seven weeks and the reason being for that is it's now starting to come the time when the crossbills come into condition so crossbills will generally come into condition around the middle of January sort of time so they're very early birds and um, green finches will generally come into condition around mid to the end of March, which is why you know, which is why I've moved the pair now to condition them together, so that hopefully we should get a, a, a green finch in condition um, at the same or near the same time as the crossbill hen. So that has involved me bringing the pair inside, so they're away from the draft now. We also have a heater here. This generally just keeps the um, yeah, it keeps it above freezing in the bird shed. That's the only reason I have this, uh, and I want to keep it about a steady five degrees C. Uh, I don't really like it getting way too cold because I don't like to take the risk of losing the birds. But this will also aid the green finch into coming into condition, um, even if it's just slightly through the night. However, the main thing which is going to be bringing that green finch into condition is the lights. So I have these lights on a timer, and the timer is set to come on at seven in the morning to uh, turn off at about half past five in the evening, which is extending the daylight hours from the, the normal half seven to four o'clock it is at the moment. Um, it is now, the current date is the 7th of December. So I'm aiming to get this pair into condition and ready for breeding around the start of February. Uh, that's going to just involve trying to keep the crossbill off a little bit while bringing the greenfinch in earlier. So I'm hoping that with the light being at the, the time it is at the moment, this would already be, we sort of replicating January, um, you know, middle of January sort of February time um, for the green finch. So he'll start to come into condition. And what we'll do is over the next few weeks, we'll extend the uh, lighting hours for the pair. And that green finch will then, once it's about mid-March, the start of February time, the green finch will think it is about April, uh, the middle of April sort of time, um, mainly just due to the lighting. So I'm hoping that that should have the desired effect to breed the um, pair. They are, um, yeah, they are sort of bonded. I have definitely noticed and I've seen them feeding each other. Um, however, it's something that they don't tend to like to do an awful lot when I'm in front of them. However, I have seen them uh, feeding each other on the cameras. Um, I moved these in here earlier today. I was watching them on the camera um, just about two o'clock. Uh, and it is now when I'm filming about half past three and the pair was sat on this perch right here uh, feeding each other the green finch cock was eating some broccoli giving it to the hen which is a great sign now um, I've obviously altered the lighting and increased the daylight hours which would hopefully bring that green finch into condition but um, you know we've also looked at the heat so it's going to be a little bit warmer not massively because there's all the other birds in this bird room which I don't want to come into condition um, and I want them to come into condition uh, at the normal breeding season time but this is just going to take the edges off the nights anyway and might have a slight little effect on the green finch um, however the main effect is going to be on the light now i've also changed the diet of the pair 
So we went from uh, just a general standard crossfill mix, which I'll actually be feeding in the breeding season, to uh, a, the, the same mix as well, but I've also given them and supplemented them some conditioning seed. Now, this is a really good mix of conditioning seed. In there we have hemp, we have rapeseed, we have linseed, we have all sorts of mixed um, wild seeds in there, lettuce seed, chai, blue moor, niger seed. It's a really nice mix. And uh, that was from Bavistas. And I'm hoping that by supplementing that now, we're going to get the build up for about six or seven weeks time. So the green finch will be into condition um, around the same time as the crossbill hen. Uh, also other things I'm supplementing is I'm giving broccoli. So I'm giving them uh, vegetables and things like that, maybe once or twice a week, uh, just at the moment, but I will increase that. As time goes on, where we'll be looking at about the middle of January to be almost every day, I'll be giving them that. Uh, and then I've also given them some egg food. Now this is a dr uh, dry egg food with shrimp. I want to see how the pair get on with it, as I do think it's probably going to help the pair come into condition. Now, um, really the plan for this pair after this, in, as we are increasing the daylight hours, the greenfinch cock should hopefully start to sing and we'll see some even more chewing from the crossbill hen. Uh, she does chew an awful lot, which is a great sign that she's coming into condition. Obviously the green finch will probably start singing, hopefully um, within the next few weeks or maybe by the end of the month into the new year. Now, um, other plans for this pair is we will be breeding them in a five by two flight. Um, I probably will increase the daylight hours in that flight as well when I put the pair in there. Uh, and I will be having sort of an external nest pan in there. I'm even going to give them two or three nest sites. One being an external nest pan, um, like you would have on a cage, and that would be surrounded with Christmas tree, uh, like fake Christmas tree. I'm also give them a chapel style nest, as I did find that my crossbills uh, were definitely interested in them this year. And we had a crossbill hen go down in one in the mixed aviary. Um, so I'm going to give them that and I'm also going to give them a sort of a, a wire mesh platform that is going to be um, just just in the corner of the flight and surrounded by fake Christmas tree and leaves um, that look similar to how they would nest in the wild. It's also going to have sticks on the bottom so I'm hoping that platform might work nicely for the pair. Now also for the pair, just uh, a bit of information for you guys to know. So this is a, uh, it's about, it's about um, I want to say about 20 inches back. So it's a 20 inch, inch deep um, flight. It's about three foot high and it's seven feet long. So it's plenty of room for the birds to get fit. I'm also giving them daily baths. So I'm giving them a fresh bath every day, uh, just a big tub of like a, a, a dish of water on the floor. It's about an inch and a half deep uh, and that's fresh rainwater for the pair uh, and that's just going to help them come into condition. Now as for supplements which I'm giving the pair, I am giving them 30 vit at the moment. So I'll look to give them 30 vit about two or three days out of a week uh, and probably do that once, uh, you know, like those few days, once every two weeks at the moment uh, and then Probably by the end of the, the year, or for, which will be about three weeks time, I'll be giving that almost uh, yeah, four, four days of the week. And hopefully by the time about middle of January, start of February, I'll be looking to keep them on that um, in smaller doses all the time to get the fertility up in the, um, the green finch cock, as he will definitely be needing that to fertilize the eggs of the green finch hen. Also, I'm giving them wheat germ oil. Uh, I'm giving them a small amount of that in with their conditioning seed. That's working nicely so far. They seem to be liking that. But if you don't want to use just a, a like a general bland, a brand of wheat germ oil, I also use Ferti oil, which tends to go quite nicely for the pair. Um, and and that, that definitely works nice. So um, I'm going to be doing that and I'm also going to be getting some new products in uh, later this week, which I'll be trying the pair on. And hopefully we should see uh, a good result from that. And I'll obviously be showing you guys that in a few weeks time once I've trialed them. Um, so that's all I've really got to say for the pair. Um, just a quick idea on what could be produced by the pair. Obviously we don't want to jump the gun here. Um, however, we have uh, the greenfinch cock who's split, which is the reason I'm talking about this, because uh, 
we will definitely be getting normals, so normal cocks and normal hens from the pair, um, which are obviously nice birds. But also, and I'm not 100% sure on how the mutations carry in hybrids, but if I talk in general terms, so if I bred the greenfinch cock to a normal hen, just a normal greenfinch hen, for example, that would produce pied hens and agate hens. Now, uh, I'm hoping that uh, while pairing him to this crossbill hen, we definitely will be getting pied hens and we will be getting uh, agate hens. But I'm also hoping that that might cross over to actually get us mutation cock birds. So we'll get pied, uh, pied hybrid cocks and pied, um, sorry, agate hybrid cocks as well, as they'll definitely be something exciting to take to the shows. Now, um, that's all I have to say on the pair. So, uh, the, 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 the hen's definitely chewing an awful lot, the crossbill hen, which is an absolutely great sign, and I'm really pleased to see that. Um, I'm giving them uh, pine cones and uh, other things to chew. She tends to be taking to them quite well. Obviously, the greenfinch doesn't really have much interaction with chewing because it isn't something that greenfinches generally do, uh, especially when you compare that to a crossbill. However, you might do if you start to learn their behavior from the crossbill hen. So this is my first step in the challenge of breeding a greenfinch uh, crossbill hybrid. And hopefully, you know, we'll, we'll check back on the pair within a few weeks um, and update you guys on the channel. And hopefully, we should start to see, uh, you know, I I an increase in condition uh, and the, the birds coming into condition um, sooner rather than later, around the new start of the new year to the middle of January. So, fingers crossed. Now guys, don't forget to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any of my future videos, including the videos on the Greenfinch Crossbill Hybrid pair, as we will see those develop over the next few weeks and into the breeding season, when hopefully we should be producing some nice hybrids for the show bench. Make sure you hit that notification button so you know you are notified every single time I upload so you don't miss any of my future videos. Hit the like button to show me that you're enjoying this content and you want to see more and make sure you share with someone else who would be interested in breeding a greenfinch crossbill or anyone else who would be interested in these videos. Now thank you very much and I'll see you in the next video.